January 7th, 11.03 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Phew! That was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I think I really did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. Can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay, I know all the bad lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But I really hurt this time. I felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be the old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Cadeau. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's gonna be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know. Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I could take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. Okay. Can we get a waitress outfit? Can I get a waitress outfit up in here? That would really help. January 7th, 11.15 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Gadot, your next witness, please. Belongs in a museum. The prosecution calls the lucky old-timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. <clears throat> okay, my throat's giving my hell up. Will the witness please take the stand? This fudging guy. Name and occupation, if you don't mind. The name's Victor Cano! Born and bred in the land of the rising sun. On end duty, I wouldn't make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Cadeau. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Gah, listen, youngin. How much car cow do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do, or did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidery, embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe he could embroider my custom sometime. Anyhow, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. I had to take a job working a cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh, yes. I was eating some seeds over a cup of Jeff Chappuccino. Seeds? What do you think these are, huh? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I see. Museum. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps? Did I? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please, tell the court. We're all here. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. What I witnessed. Can I get a witness? A young man was reading the sports paper. The servicing girl brought him a javachino. But she put something in it. What? The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's a servant girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Really? Mr. Cadu, she is not a servant girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Yeah, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words? What's wrong with the old-fashioned ways, hmm? N newfangled? I might be older than you, really. <laughs> All this talk of radios and glasses is wireless and spectacles, I tell you. I excuse me. Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. They never existed, boy. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Knight. <laughs> yeah, yes, Your Honor. What's uh, what I witnessed? 
A young man was re Okay, okay, let's go. So you saw the victim, then? You saw Mr. Glenilg? I wanted to know if Guts and Brown retained his championship or not. Though he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location of the... And at the location in question. There are partitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you... What? Yeah. If you say that you could see the victim... That means you were sitting at a table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? Yeah! I got a place to drink Traffuccino! I don't go to sit! I don't remember what table I was sitting at! You mean you go there to eye the what? The waitress? This is the one that's... Really? Mr. Cadeau, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Mr. Cadeau never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I see. Now I satisfy. The doctor said I only need for spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. And I saw what the saving girl put in the Javagino as well. I bet I know what's coming up and something tells me I'm not going to like it. Press it. Let's go. Your Honor. We need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask what the witness at that the witness add what he knows about this in the testimony. Hmm. I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She's very conspicuously put some white powder in there. D did she really put that into the coffee? You doubt me, boy? She took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar? In a small brown bottle like that? Like that. Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Huh. A bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. But what did the actor you... Mm. What did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Ah! He took just one sip. You youngins, you waste everything. Those javachinos cost eight dollars. In the end, in the old, uh, in the good old days, we would have drunk every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died. Congratulations! You have earned the title of Baddiest Man to grace a courtroom. Museum. So it was an immediate death. Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh, yes. He slumped off without much as a twitch. I felt the Jabuccino I just drank turned sour in my stomach. Oh, yes. I know that feeling. And the waitress, I presume she is... You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you could identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry. You can see all the way up to her, uh, her, you know, uh, she's particularly naked in the- she's practically naked in that uniform. What? So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit? But anyone could wear just such an outfit, even me! Mr. Knight, please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. Don't get all excited, Nick. You've got to keep yourself together. But I guess I got a bit carried away. Yeah, there are other things I recognize about her, too. He seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Press! Sure you saw Waitress take the coffee over to the victim? But what matters is whether the waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Wait, wait. Mr. Cadu, these other features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask that you add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There's a ribbon in her hair, and her apron straps are loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all, her face? 
Yeah, as if I wouldn't remember that. Objection. Museum. The witness noticed the straps on the accused's apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right. I can even tell you the color of the ribbon on her hair was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Checking! My red ribbon. Ooh. Ask about the straps, ask about the back. Straps first. Mr. Godot, you seem especially interested in the straps. Why is that? What? what? The ribbon in her hair, the straps on her apron. What's the fascination? A uh, fascination? Objection! <laughs> Museum. People have all kinds of fetishes. Trite, we don't need to embarrass the witness. Listen, you young and upstart! I haven't got some sick strap fetish! Hmm. Is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why. He was so fixated on the witness witnesses um on the waitress's straps. I said I haven't got a strap fetish! How many times do I gotta repeat myself? Very well, continue with your testimony, Mr. Kiddo, and make it strapless. <laughs> You think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time. That's why he was there. But he was there for the cute outfits, right? Not the waitress. I guess. Hmm, she makes a good point, though. Hey, did I just say something clever? I wonder if the waitress w Mr. Godot saw really was Maggie. That's, that's what we have to figure out, Nick. Press. Leave the other side. I suppose the waitress is back. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Objection. Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. And this is harassment! I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps and ribbons! I'm just telling you what I saw! Mr. Godot, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front, that is, uh, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer, I'm noticing! And if I can't find a hole in it soon, it'll get even longer, I bet. There wasn't anything that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front. But he's a butt, he's a butt man, alright. He's a booty man. Not a bad thing. At all. You didn't find anything to be distinct, but you did clearly see the witch's face, right? Why does it say witness? No question about it. I didn't come this far to back down now. Victor Cadeau never backs down. That's not the answer I was looking for, but okay. This has turned into a matter of pride for old CD now, I guess. I wonder if he really did see Maggie's face or not. Like I thought, we need some concrete proof of this. Proof that the old guy didn't see the waitress clearly from the front. Do you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the wait. Okay, okay, we got that before. Alright, now we have to figure this out. What about the big ketchup stain, right? Yeah, this. Do that, apron. Here we go. Mr. Cadeau, I would like you to please l take a look at this. Ha, that filthy thing would suit filthy like you. Filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of my grandson looks like. Just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. You think I forget something as dirty as that? Hmm? Well, you have with it, clot? Ah! Woo? Ah. Well, what, what? What is it? Ever since I said you have with it, clot, there's been an air of science in here. Mr. Cadeau, this apron. Is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning? Eh? 
And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't find... Yeah, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen this apron before... Eh. Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress in the front. Eh. Oops! Oh my god. Oh my god. Witness. You can't just oops your way out of this. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trail on our hands. Museum. Mm hmm? Listen, Shrite. Here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one wit waitress in the restaurant. Then why did we do any of this? Oh, because he never saw her front, so how did he see she do the sprinkling? That beat the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. You see, exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fated defendant may rest on what you have say. You remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forget what burger a customer wanted. He can't remember. Probably more like he messed up so many times he blocked it out. Very well. Let's just... Let's just just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kiddo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. Really? All right, here we go. It was another of these pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy brat kept rustling his pages. The young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. And the serving girl in question brought over the cappuccino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. Okay. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that a kind of cruel? F him! <laughs> I suppose, but that's what I do best. Oh dear. About the victim. Here we go. Press. Spectacles? Dark glasses to you. One of the lenses were green. But the other was broken. You think of rubbish. That's why I remember him so well. He did have some kind of lens over his left eye. But I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. Hmm, he seems to have been wearing some rather new, modern-looking shades. Perhaps I should take up to wearing some and, and rival Mr. Godot's sharp appearance. Ah, we better come up with something sharp and quick. I guess I'll wait and see if I should challenge him about the spectacles. Okay. Keep going. The newspaper was a sports paper, was it? That young hooligan, I never asked him. Can't you even read without fidgeting him? How was I supposed to be able to read the back page with all that wrestling going on? I need to find out if Gutson Brown retained his championship title. It was his paper, not yours. If you wanted to know so bad, why didn't you buy your own? What are you looking at me like that for, hmm? How dare you judge? Oh, well! Gutson Brown got beaten yesterday, by the way. Anyway. The wireless. The decadent young rascal. In my day, it was one of the or the other. Read the paper or listen to the wireless. Oh boy. And using an earpiece, it's selfish. That's what it is. I was my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. Was he that desperate to listen to the radio? What are you looking at me like that for, hmm? I do you feel sorry for me. Oh, oh! Oh. Oh. 
You mean the waitress, who you only saw from behind, right? You're one of those, are ya? You never let anything go, isn't that right? Maybe. What does it matter if I saw from the front or from behind? My eyes don't lie! Ow! Ow! I better not push it until I've got some hard evidence. Little fidget. His free hand. Yes! Which hand was that? Weren't you listening before, clothiers? I said he was wrestling the newspaper with his right hand, didn't I? If his free hand wasn't his right hand, which had it be, you moron? Oh, oh! Huh. Perhaps the great Mr. Trite has three hands. Yeesh, I was only asking. No need to gang up on me and treat me like a freak. The whole point of this cross examination is to establish just one thing. That this old guy's memory has more holes than a slice of Swiss. I guess we just need to find a contradiction in his testimony somewhere, huh? Anything will do, even the smallest detail. We just need the one mistake and he's ours. Here's my question about that. It was in his left ear, right? Okay. No, it doesn't work. Okay. The cup looks like it's right-handed, right? So it's gotta be right. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Mr. Cadeau. Because it's like this. So, yeah. He took over his right hand. Mr. Cadeau, do you remember what you told the... You... I don't know. Do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing credibility of your memory? I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you. Nothing. If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the Pigeon Zone! Museum. Here to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Cadeau, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand. While drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make it that his left. Yeah, what is this? Kindergarten? But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used. Correct. Yes, and on the rim, you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Cadeau, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Ah! <laughs> Mr. Cadeau, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he came from. Wait! If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong. I don't care about that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. Y you still insist on your testimony? A young bat was holding the cup, the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am. It's that dead young hot bot, but, and you, and you, you smack a head Yahoo who I fault. Who, me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough of from you today, already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Godot, but... Museum. Sure. Why not hear a little more? Mr. Mr. Cadeau! But this is my 16th cup of coffee. So this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain! You can rely on Victor. Yay! Left hand or right hand, here we go. The bar was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens on his, of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. Alright, okay, okay. But... Yeah, the picture shows it on his left. Oh, we know the victim was... Yeah, so in the radio there, too? I guess not. The only thing's there, it's not in the... Oh, okay. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. Museum. It wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? 
using it. The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. Really? ATTV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad. But they don't matter. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth. It's true, he doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts, in good old black and white. Alright, here we go. Well, the victim was wearing an HMD. TV, CD, DVD, what does it matter? It was none of them actually, but anyway. And you're sure that he was wearing the earpiece on the same side? No question, I could only see that side of his head from the way I was sitting. Yeah, that's pretty obvious if you look at the floor plans. From the opposite table, he'd only have a view of the victim... ...of the side of the victim's head. If it was on- if it was his right hand and his... ...and the headset was on the right side, then... Unless he saw him in a mirror! Maybe he saw him in a mirror. He didn't actually look at him directly. He saw him in a mirror, which means the old man would be... Uh, floor plans. Wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Other one. If he's here, the old man would have to be, like, here, and he's reflecting off. If he sees him here, bing bing. The reflection here would show... The left as a right? Hmm, yeah, okay. That's the only way, you'd have to be over here to see it like that. Hmm, hey, yeah, that's it, right there! That's it, that's it! Let's read the rest, let's listen to the rest, though. It seems you kept an eye on Mr. Uh, Glen Elg. He was getting on my nerves! Rushing that newspaper and filling with his earpiece all the time. And then he went on and made all that fuss down from one sip of cappuccino. I wanted to say to him, calm down, you young brat. Just looking at him made me suddenly speed up my seat eating. I could have choked. So I take it the victim was a walking ball of nervous energy. The earpiece you mentioned. Which hand did the victim touch it with? Yo, one of those people. One of those people who uses his left hand to get things out of his right pocket. Or fastens his left cuff with his right hand. Well, that's the only way to... And when the to tour guide says, On your right side, you'll see the famous blah blah. The only one who deliberately looks left. Well, aren't you? N no I didn't mean... I actually used the hand on the same side of his body that the earpiece was in. Ow, ow, ow. So if he had the HMD on his left side, then it was his left hand, I guess. But it wouldn't make any sense if it was a mirror, huh? It was left, it would look like it was his right. But he did drink with his right, so if he used the same hand as that was on the earpiece... But wouldn't the earpiece be on the other side because of his medication on the left side? So is the picture a mirror as well? The picture's gotta be a mirror as well then, but why would his picture be a mirror? That's kind of wrong. The only other possibility is... That's the cup that someone else was using, so where's his cup? That's the only other possibility. You seem very sure of yourself, Mr. Cadeau. That's because I know what I saw, no matter what tricks you try to play on me. It looks like he really did see the guy picking the cup up with his left hand. This is a dead end. Well, Nick, what do you think? I think the guy's telling the truth. But even so... Something's not quite right. Then check evidence at him until he breaks. But if he's not lying, there wouldn't be any contradictions in his testimony, right? Let's try this. Got it! Yeah, there it is. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Cadeau, there is something very strange about your t observations of the victim. 
What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. I can only see the side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. But what did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Cadeau. But the victim couldn't hear from his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Eh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear. Because he couldn't even hear it in that ear. Uh, is that true, Captain? <laughs> Museum. It is. P P -p -p pigeon d d d d Pretty pigeon! <laughs> okay. Order, order, order. This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the witches, waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when he knew when we know his ear, eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot. Ugh. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. It's what makes it bearable, mother. Black coffee sucks. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? Yep. This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down. I know I'm right. The lad drank his cappuccino with his left hand. Museum. Let me put the, you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand, and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions. That the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Z. Which hand the victim used to pick up his coffee cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The fact still stands. With one hand on the, or the other, Mr. L drank the poison coffee. Like this. Sadly, Mr. Godot, that wasn't that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory was credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless. Puh. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey! I'm sorry, Mr. Cadeau. You can't reach me from there. <laughs> I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Alright, good for now. What? Hold it! Wait! If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Cadeau. There's that blue suit of young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes in it now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Godot, but there's nothing I, I can do. I've kept my mouth shut till now. But there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance. I want another crack at you, you young shark. M me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter is the Centric Old Man's scrapbook. Hmm. Is he? Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the coffee you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 68 years old, but, uh, Victor Cadeau is still a man. Okay. That's weird. That's enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet! Much, much! Quicker! 
I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> you better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's got to be using some sort of infinite ammo kill with that box of seeds. God mode! All right, here we go. Witness testimony. The final showdown. First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure for myself. The young man slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his cappuccino. But the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke and the stripe of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? It did? Hmm. Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Eh? You're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor defenseless old man? N no, we are not doubting you, Mr. Cadeau. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what? Probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. Yeah, bird brain. That's why I, that's all you can think of. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Knight, your final cross-examination. Please. Okay. Final showdown, huh? Alright. Here we go, press. Um, the court generally prefers if witnesses are sure of themselves, Mr. Cadeau. No, it's a brick? I'm warning you, I'm more savage than a macho man right now. You won't beat me with this testimony. This is the final battle. Ow! Ow! He's chucking those seeds harder than ever. I better be careful. Come on, Nick. Nail him. The court has already heard that testimony, Mr. Cadeau. I know that. I was just setting the mood. How else am I supposed to build up the suspense, hmm? The suspense? Isn't that enough? Should I work the audience a bit more? No, no. Please continue, Mr. Cadeau. As quickly as possible. Got to pee. Alright, now where was I? Ah, yes, the young boy slumped over the table. And? Were there vase pieces anywhere? A vase, you say? Yes! There are vases on all the tables in that place. The accident's waiting to happen. They're practically begging to be knocked over. Well, he's right about there being vases. I do remember his seeing them there, too. But they're perfectly intact. There was a vase on the table when I ate lunch there. You saw the moment when the victim actually knocked over the vase? Well, it's hard to say. It's a bit unclear. How do you really define? Okay, I get it. I heard it break, and the sight of it is burned into my memory as clear as day. What if it was a different table and they switched the tablecloths? But why? That wouldn't make any sense. Hmm. The body was seen there. Hmm. Weird. Unless. Maybe. It broke in a stripe of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Okay. Strip of cloth, yeah. Soaked in water, you mean? Yes, it splashed me on the knee as well. You said you were sitting at the table across the room from the victim, correct? And yet the water still managed to splash onto you? Hmm. It was cold, I clearly remember it splashing me. Could the water really make it all the way across to the other side of the room? Okay, if everything's mirrored, then he could be here and the old man would be here. I don't... There's something weird going on in this one. I don't know what. Keep listening. You mean the vase on the victim's table falling upside down and breaking? The vase turned upside down, and my testimony's turning this case upside down. It's a joke. I just want everyone to hear it. What do you think, Captain? I'm impressed by your ability to waste time. 
Gado hasn't raised any objections for a while now. So you young show off? With that scrap of information, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. If I lose this one, I'll take it like a man in a mitt. Defeat. He's really giving you the evil eye, Maya. It's you he's looking at, Nick, not me. He's like he's saying, I triple dog dare you to find a contradiction, youngin. I guess I'll just have to rise to the challenge then. The only way- okay, upside down would mean that it's actually a different setup. Let's try this. Nope. No. Nope, okay, let's try this. Go back one. Going back one. There you go, the picture. Mr. Godot, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Huh. So what? Oh, the vase is in the picture! Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Granddad? I'm no Granddad of yours, Hopscotch! Ow, oh, ow! Oh. Enough! If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night! Ah! Mm hmm, what is it now? I just remembered something! Y yes Go on. The broken vase? Huh? It was on my table! What? Ah, oh, well, you see, uh... It startled me when that young lad collapsed. So I stood up. That must have been when I fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table? <laughs> yes, it was on my table. And that's how my groin can be completely soaked. Ew. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Cadeau. You certainly earned your kudos for today. Uh, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I... Uh... Have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Ah! Wait! Wait a minute! If that's the case, there's more! I've got more to say! Oh yes, I remember something else! Bailiff! It's got the witness out of the courtroom! Wait! Listen to me! Was he useful at all? I don't... I, I'm assuming next day we're going to find which one was broken, and that'll give us an idea where the heck he was. Because I don't even know. Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked. And I'm still not in a position to deliver a verdict. Huh? The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand and the earpiece, which was inserted into his left ear, out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it. I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. There's one more thing before I call today's session to an end. W one more thing, Your Honor? The witness we just heard from, he is most insistent that his testimony should be of use. We summarized it accordingly into this statement. Um, okay. You may each have a copy of it if you wish. Whatever. The prosecution doesn't need props like that. It does really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Knight. There are three copies. My own, yours, and Mr. Godot's. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I'm sorry, this isn't a piece of the testimony. More like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? That is all. This court is adjourned. The hell are we gonna do with this? Defec. Alright. I don't even know. I don't even know. Save. Alright. Alright there, that is the game for now!
I had fun up and watching. That's what's all about. Having fun. Thanks, like, come by and see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>